Okay. So the last thing we should probably cover here before we move on to our muzzle velocity variation and uh, then finish off our uh, internal ballistics portion of the series is uh, something called muzzle brake pull-off. Now this is something that does definitely fit into the internal ballistics category as muzzle brake pull-off can uh, affect the bore access before the projectile exits the muzzle. And that can cause a major point of impact shift. So uh, what is exactly muzzle brake pull-off and how do we deal with it? Uh, basically, if you think about a muzzle brake, that's a very effective way to reduce the felt recoil of a, of a heavy kicking rifle. And the way a muzzle brake works, as most of you probably know already, is basically you have a projectile that's leaving the muzzle and you have all the high velocity compressed hot gases uh, that are going to strike the baffles of the muzzle brake, and that's going to deflect, uh, it's going to pull the rifle uh, forward. Those baffles are going to direct that gas rearward and sideways, pulling the rifle forward. And uh, that's going to partially counteract and reduce the force of recoil. Now, the sum total of the uh, recoil energy will still be backwards. So it's, it's really a, another force being added into the equation here which can potentially shift the axis of the bore, okay? So this is going to be very important, especially if we're talking about uh, big bore rifles that have uh, highly effective muzzle brakes. The more effective a muzzle brake is, the greater this force is, and the more we're going to have to pay attention to it to ensure that it's not going to shift our uh, point of uh, impact due to axis shift. We want to make sure that when that thing is pulling forward, it's pulling straight forward and not causing us to uh, have any problems with their shooting position or deflect it right or left. And so let's get into it here. A lot of shooters are unaware of this muzzle brake pull off because they assume that uh, this is all going to be uh, happening after the bullet has exited the muzzle. Okay. And it's true that the majority of the muzzle brake action is happening as the uh, bullet uh, seals off the front baffle and that diverts a lot of those hot gases into those uh, baffles behind that and that's where the majority of that muzzle brake action is occurring. However, uh, there is a cold column of air sitting in the bore before the rifle bullet begins to move forward into the, into the barrel. So you gotta consider that column of air in front of the bullet being rammed down the barrel at 3,000 feet a second or whatever your muzzle velocity is, and that's going to definitely cause a huge volume of a moving gas forward that uh, a bunch of it is going to start acting in those baffles before the bullet has even exited. So this gun does start to have this force exerted on it before the bullet exits the muzzle. Although it is true that the majority of it is uh, probably transitional ballistics when the bullet is just exiting the muzzle. After the bullet is gone, uh, the rifle can recoil however it wants and it's not going to affect the flight path. So what we want to concern ourselves with here in internal ballistics is all the deflection that occurs in the point of impact, or I mean, sorry, the bore axis shifts that occur before the bullet exits the muzzle. So that brings us into this topic here. So how much air do we have... Uh, being moved out of the barrel before the bullet exits anyways. When do we need to start worrying about this? Well, if you consider the volume of air, that's pretty easy to calculate. The volume of air sitting in a rifle bore is uh, simply have basically volume equals pi radius squared times height for the mass, uh, for the volume of a cylinder, okay? But you can get a basic guesstimation of uh, how much uh, air we have sitting in front, how much cold air we have sitting in front of that bullet. And that, that's all going to exit in a millisecond uh, as the bullet starts to move forward before it exits the barrel. Now, uh, CFM, I know, is kind of an ambiguous term when it comes to uh, quantifying how much gas is moving because a gas is all compressible. You can compress air quite easily. But for our comparison purposes, I'm going to be using CFM just to kind of illustrate the comparative volumes of these different uh, bore sizes, okay? So is, I know it's not like a precise measurement or it's not really correct to be using this, but just for our comparison purposes, it's fine. 
So if we consider this uh, little overview here of how much uh, volume of air we have in the bore that's going to be rammed through that uh, muzzle and through those baffles as the bullet is exiting, uh, you can see how when you start to get into your big bores, you have a significant increase in airflow. Okay, uh, Really notice a big increase in the 50 cals. Uh, and if you have a longer barrel, you're going to have a greater volume of air. Quite a bit of airflow, if you really think about it. And uh, all that airflow is occurring before the, the bullet exits the muzzle. Now, after the bullet exits the muzzle, you're going to have a, uh, a lot more of the hot compressed gases, and it's really going to pick up then. And that's when a lot of your recoil reduction actually occurs. But this is the one we're concerned about, because this is the uh, airflow hitting those baffles, that's going to pull off your bore access before the bullet exits, which can be problematic for us. So when exactly does this become a problem for a long range shooter? And uh, if so, how, how do we deal with it? Well, in a big bore rifle, I'd say 338 and up. This is something you, you seriously need to uh, become concerned with and address. Otherwise you may have uh, a lot of uh, lateral dispersion or, uh, you know, you might have a lot of point of impact variation. You might not be able to shoot this rifle very well, and you might uh, chalk it up to something else going on. You might misdiagnose the problem if you're unaware of this uh, thing that occurs here, muzzle brake pull-off. In your smaller caliber rifles, 243, even the 308s, this is a pretty small issue, and it will have a tiny bit of an effect, but uh, really in the big bores is where you really got to be aware of this. And it's just good to be aware of nonetheless anyways. But if you're using a, a muzzle brake on a big rifle, this is something you have to concern yourself with. Now, uh, it's interesting because this uh, wasn't even really known about until the 50 caliber started uh, being uh, used in the military on shoulder-fired rifles with muzzle brakes. And uh, it was like in the 80s and the 90s, the military started noticing that a lot of their hardcore, very accomplished shooters when issued these 50 caliber rifles that were, you know, when you test fire them, they're very accurate. But uh, w with certain shooters, they noticed that some guys could not maintain point of impact with these things. And they seem to be kind of shooting all over the place. And uh, it's not like they're recoil sensitive or anything, but it was such a problem to where uh, the, the U.S. Army actually started doing a little bit of research trying to figure out exactly what was going on. And to make a long story short, what they determined was that um, due to improper rifle deployment, um, particularly where the natural point of aim was not exactly on target and the, the shooters were not uh, positioned squarely behind the rifle, muzzle brake pull-off was causing the weapon to actually uh, shift its bore axis, uh, usually to the left, and would shift the point of impact in that direction, usually... Not very consistently because uh, that would depend on exactly how the, the, the rifleman was laying behind the weapon. And uh, that can vary a little bit in the field too. If, if you don't really, if you're not conscious of this, uh, uh, there's a lot of different shooting positions that a lot of uh, long range shooters use that do not work with these uh, large bore rifles because of this uh, problem. So one question that comes up here is why does this cause an impact uh, to the left with a right-handed shooter usually. What's going on? How does that work? Well, basically, you got to consider a thing. We're going to get into this later when we talk about uh, long-range rifle marksmanship and advanced long-range rifle marksmanship. This is kind of a part of it here. Um, but you have a natural point of aim. And what that basically means in a nutshell is that when the shooter is perfectly at rest, he's not muscling the rifle onto the target which means that you're not using, you know, you're not trying to pull the rifle into target. But when the rifle is at rest in your shoulder, laying there, uh, the natural point of aim is hopefully pointing straight at the target. If your natural point of aim is not straight at the target, what you're going to find yourself doing is pulling the rifle uh, or uh, moving it with your non-firing hand uh, by uh, manipulating the toe of the rifle like we showed uh, earlier. Uh, with the toe support part of the video in the last video, uh, what you're going to find is that if you have to muscle that uh, toe in the right position, when you when you fire the rifle, your body perceives 
the concussion and the recoil, it anticipates it kind of. And what happens, uh, if you really slow it down in super, super slow motion, your body temporarily kind of relaxes unnaturally before it flinches. And uh, this is kind of at the exact wrong time because what happens is uh, that's at the exact time that this muzzle brake pull-off is starting to occur before the bullet exits. And uh, this relaxation can cause that rifle to kind of return to the natural point of aim. So you had been muscling the rifle onto the target um, before, and then when, as soon as your body perceives that recoil, you start to re relax very quickly. And this all kind of subconscious, this happens real fast. It's, it's a reflex. And uh, as you relax, the rifle starts to return to that natural point of aim. And if you're not squarely situated behind that rifle, um, this is usually going to pull you off. And uh, muzzle brake uh, pull-off can kind of amplify that effect because it'll it'll cause that relaxation period to kind of be amplified. And uh, that will uh, give you that much of a more opportunity to, to shift the toe of the rifle around. It's a little hard to explain, I guess, but I think I think you guys got it. You're pretty sharp. So how do we deal with this problem? Well, it's actually quite easy to deal with it. It's uh, For uh, large bore rifles equipped with high-efficiency muzzle brakes, you're going to have to position yourself squarely behind the rifle in such a way that your natural point of aim is going to be straight in front of you when the rifle begins to move when you fire it. Your body is going to uh, anticipate and perceive that uh, coming recoil. It will automatically relax. But if you're positioned exactly behind the rifle and you have the proper toe support, like we talked about in the video before, where uh, it's nice and centered on that sandbag um, and you're not muscling the rifle, you don't want to. A lot of guys use their unsupported uh, hand to manipulate that toe around, and that works fine for a lot of applications. But for a large bore rifle with a muzzle brake where this is a, a problem, you you're going to be better off using the sandbag because you don't want to be muscling the rifle onto the target in such a way that it's going to relax and just return to that point of aim before the bullet leaves. That's not going to help you out very much. So uh, simply uh, positioning your body squarely behind the rifle so that you can draw a straight line from the muzzle all the way down your back through, uh, if your right-handed shooter is going to be through your uh, right leg as you're laying prone on the ground, uh, if you're squarely behind that rifle and you got the toe supported with a sandbag, that rifle is going to have, all it's going to do is recoil straight back into your shoulder and that recoil will be absorbed straight into the body. So if you're doing everything right here, uh, once the rifle is basically fired, it should be moving and settling without you influencing it in any way. It should be perfectly at rest. So it's going to just recoil and settle uh, consistently every time you're not going to be pulling it around. Hopefully your uh, muzzle brake is uh, going to basically be pulling equally on the uh, both sides and uh, the recoil should be straight up and down. You don't want any recoil to the left or to the right because this muzzle brake pull off is really going to uh, accelerate that leftward or rightward uh, motion and that'll really give you that bore axis shift that's not going to be fun for you you're going to be cussing and dialing that weapon uh in every direction trying to counteract for some wind that you didn't know was there it's going to give you a headache so uh this is something that uh hopefully all the guys at uh sodic and the u.s army who were uh discovering some of these problems originally this is something they've already identified so that you don't have to uh struggle they've already done the struggling for you so that's kind of nice so uh, here I'm just going to show real quick, and I recorded this the other day, uh, out in the field, kind of uh, showing you what uh, the correct shooting position okay. is going to look like. Now, if this was particularly a rifle with a large muzzle brake, now this one isn't. Go ahead and open your bolt there real quick. Okay. Now, if this was a rifle equipped with a large muzzle brake, a, a high-efficiency muzzle brake, you're going to have this thing uh, actually pulling forward before the bullet exits the barrel. Now, what I mean by that, I'm not saying the rifle is going to pull forward. The recoil, the sum total of the recoil will still be to the rear. You are still going to get knocked in the shoulder with a heavy recoiling rifle, even with a good muzzle brake. But a lot of that energy starts to pull forward. So you have two different uh, forces, really. You have uh, that column of air in front of the bullet that's very cold and dense. 
and it's ramming through that muzzle brake, which I don't have on this rifle, uh, before the bullet is even gone. And what can happen there is it'll pull the rear of the rifle out of whack if it's not perfectly square against you and if the recoil on you isn't perfectly aligned. So what we have here, okay, and our bolt is open, so we're good. So I'm not gonna get shot in the face. You'll notice here, Dinosaur Ichia is uh, situated very squarely behind this rifle. So he's like, see in a line there? Now lay crooked against the rifle for contrast. This shooting position would be okay with a small rifle, uh, not equipped with a muzzle brake. Now you could get away with that. But uh, like uh, we showed you earlier, go back to the original position. You're going to want to be situated squarely behind the rifle, particularly on something with the muzzle brake attached. <laughs>